So today I want us to look at a few questions that we can answer together. And uh, hopefully this will help you in your journey for uh, your relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Here's the first question. Why should I get baptized? Number one, because it's an act of obedience. Um, In order to understand the reason for being water baptized, it is important to consider what the Bible says about it. Jesus himself was baptized. He was not a sinner, yet he humbled himself. Even though he was perfect, he actually took the step of obedience for us to follow as an example. So Jesus, being perfect and um, not needing to really get baptized, he took the step. And we see that in Mark chapter 1, verse 9 to verses 11. One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and... John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. So God, the father, was very happy with Jesus because Jesus took a step of obedience. Sometimes we have to take steps of obedience even though they don't make sense. And to me, it doesn't make sense that Jesus needed to get baptized, but other way, He was perfect, yet he humbled himself, and he followed through with the instruction. And he did this to live, to live as an example for us. Um, Not only did Jesus obey this step, um, but he also demanded us or asked of us to take the step personally. He himself asks us, and this is why we do it as an act of obedience. We see what Jesus asked in Matthew 28, 19. He says, this is Jesus himself speaking. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus' word saying, I want you to get baptized. I want you to take the step. So this is not just some cute thing that we do just because that's what church is supposed to do or because faith is supposed to do it or because religion demands it of us. No, this is something that God demands of us as the Father, but also Jesus personally demands this of us as well. So number one, it's an act of obedience. Number two, it's a public declaration. Baptism declares that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. It is a public confession of your faith in and commitment to Jesus Christ. I'm not sure if you've ever met couples that are dating, and they've been dating for a couple months, but they never post pictures about themselves on social media. (laughs) Have you ever met people like that? This usually tends to happen with guys sometimes. (laughs) But when you post the pictures... Um, what is happening essentially is you're letting the public know, I'm no longer single. I'm out of the market. So when a guy does not want to post any pictures of him and his girlfriend, or vice versa, a girl doesn't want to post any pictures of her and her boyfriend, this is is telling you, um, I'm not off the market yet. And I'm with you, but I'm not really with you. This is exactly... This is exactly how baptism works in the spiritual realm. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's you making a public declaration yeah. that you are with Jesus, you're in team Jesus, yeah. and you love Jesus, and you trust Jesus. Yeah. So it's a public um, declaration. It's an act of obedience. All right, here's the second question that we need to answer. How are we to get baptized? Uh, the word baptized in the original means to immerse or dip under water. To fully immerse or to fully dip under the water. It doesn't say sprinkle. So we get baptized the same way that Jesus got baptized, which was by being immersed in water. How do we know that Jesus was immersed in water? Well, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. It says this, after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened. So every baptism in the Bible that you will read about is done through immersion. And uh, I know that a lot of us probably grew up in a certain... um, uh, tradition where you baptize children and you baptize them by sprinkling water on their heads and maybe that was you and you got baptized like that uh, but there is no biblical context to being sprinkled yeah, yeah. and there's also no biblical context to um, baptizing babies yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. because you being baptized is a declaration of your faith yeah. 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 it's it's a symbolism it's 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 you um, wearing a sign that you've made a decision and you were well aware of the decision and you were well informed of the decision yeah. Yeah. And you're well committed to the decision. Yeah, that's right. A baby cannot get baptized well informed, well aware, or well committed yeah. because a child, a baby, has no commitment. That's true. That's true. Okay? So it is important for you to understand that every pattern of the Bible, including like you can read it mostly in the book of Acts, it's done through immersion. We can have one example in Acts chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. 
Now, when they came up out of the water, and we'll leave it right there, um, this is implying that the eunuch that Philip baptized was immersed inside. So someone say, not sprinkled. Not sprinkled. But plunged. But plunged. Yeah, you got to get plunged, okay? Next question is, who should be baptized? Every person who has made a decision to follow Christ should get baptized. Because the requirement in baptism is to believe. Uh, there's really no need to have a specific age or to do a specific uh, uh, set of rules or things. It just actually, from what we see in the Bible, we see that it's whoever believes in Jesus. And in a lot of traditions, in a lot of churches, uh, we've made rules as men and, and as broken humanity. We've made rules that if you want to get baptized, you've got to follow a whole bunch of set of rules, a whole bunch of set of things. And you got to jump through this hoop, and you got to do the splits ten times, and then you got to do fifteen jumping jacks. And it almost feels like, ah, man, getting baptized. I don't know if I want to get baptized. That's going to take too much work. And so a lot of people end up going like, ah, screw this. I'm not going to get baptized, right? But the truth is that if we look at the pattern of the Bible, um, in order to get baptized, the one thing that is required is to believe. And we can see that right away in Acts chapter two, verse forty-one. It says this: Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about three thousand in all. Baptizing 3,000 people, that's a workout. <laughs> that must be tiring as heck. Acts chapter 8 verse 12 says this, But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. <coughs> what was the thing that was needed? Believe. That was not a trick question. It's very simple. <laughs> what was needed to get baptized? Believe. Believed, yeah. Now, when it comes to children, we believe in baptizing them, children. We believe in baptizing them only when they are old enough to understand what it means and make a personal declaration of belief. Yes. So there's no age. So, you know, there's some children that are more mature than most grown-ups. And if they understand what they're doing and they believe in Jesus, we'll baptize you. But there's some children that are just very childlike because that's what they are. We cannot baptize them. Um, just because they saw uh, Billy and Bob get baptized, right. right? Or because Grandma promised him ice cream after church. Those are not reasons to baptize a child. We have to make sure that the child understands. So we're not opposed to young people getting baptized. We're just opposed to the idea of just doing it out of ritual or doing it out of tradition. Next question is this. When should I get baptized? Believers in the New Testament were baptized the same day. Not five months later, not six months later, not a year later, the same day. So as soon as a person decides to believe in Christ, they can be baptized and are encouraged to do so. So if you believe in Jesus and Jesus is your Lord and Savior, we're encouraging you to get baptized. Get plugged into a city group so that we know that you really believe and that you're really following Jesus. And uh, we get you baptized in Jesus' name. As soon as a person decides to believe Christ, they can get baptized. Look at Acts 2.41. Those who accepted his message were baptized. Come on. Acts 8, 35, verse 39 to verse 39. It says, Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told them the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here's water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized them. That was the same day he got saved. Yeah. Same road trip. Yeah? yeah? So there's not a lot of complication when it comes to baptism. It's just you knowing that Jesus is your everything. Yes. That he is your Savior and the one that you're placing your trust in. Amen. What is the meaning of baptism? Number one, I move from death to life. Come on. Yes. What is the meaning of it? Is The meaning is that I'm, I'm going from a, a, a state of spiritual death to spiritual life in Christ. It's not yes. physical death to life. It's, it's a spiritual death life that comes to be. You're, you're moving from death from spiritual life. And what is spiritual death? Spiritual death is you not seeing a need or your need for Jesus. Right. So how many of you in here are sitting, you're listening to the sermon and you're enjoying it and you understand it and you agree mm -hmm. and you know you need Jesus versus how many of you are in here today or how many of you are even listening online? And you don't see your need for him. If you don't see a need or feel a need or consider your need for God or Jesus in your life, here's what the word of the Lord would actually call you. 
you're spiritually dead. You're not spiritually alive. And if you're spiritually dead, what you need is for Jesus to bring you back to life through salvation. That's why salvation is known as something that the Christians would throw around a lot in the 90s, 80s, 90s. Born again. Are you born again? Jesus spoke of being born again to Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a guy that was very studious. And when Jesus told him and asked him, he said, you must be born again in order to enter into heaven, he said. Nicodemus took it literally. And he said, do I need to like climb back inside my mother and be birthed that way? And Jesus was saying, truly I tell you, this is not about your physical aspect, natural aspect. You must be born again in spirit. So how do we know if we're spiritually alive? Well, being spiritually alive means that you recognize your need for Jesus. You, You desire his things, his kingdom. If you are not spiritually alive, you cannot enjoy this. You will come to church and it will be a drag. And the only way that we can get you to come to church is if someone bribes you with Korean chicken after. Or some bubble tea. Now there are some people that are not born again but they are conceived. Conception happens before birth. There's life, but you're not born yet. And I feel like the people that are conceived are the people that fall under the category that say, I know I need to go to church and I'm going to force myself to do it, but it's not really my thing still. Or like, I know it's good for me, but I don't know if I can commit to it 100%. Or when you notice yourself coming to church late all the time? Well, not only late. Um, when you miss church a lot and you have an inconsistent uh, presence in the house of God and you're consistently like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, it may be that you're not spiritually, you're not, you're not born again yet. And you may. I'm not saying that this is it. I mean, other reasons could be that you're just very undisciplined and disorganized (laughs) and lazy. You're a lazy, born-again child of God. (laughs) But sometimes we're trying to fulfill the life in the Spirit with the power of our flesh. And you can't do that. And so there are some of you who are not born again yet. You're in conception. And you're coming to church. Once a month, once a while. (laughs) And it's hard for you to commit. I may have to suggest to you that you may have to ask the Lord, Lord, am I born again yet? Have I been birthed? Because I know that I need you, but I don't act like it. And I can't because I'm powerless to. And that's because you need to be born again. So where are you at right now? Where are you at? Um, when, when, When you get baptized, it's it's... Um, a symbolism of I'm moving from spiritual death to spiritual life. Our entrance into the water during baptism (laughs) identifies us with Christ's death on the cross, his burial in the tomb, and his resurrection from the dead. So it's an identification of the process that Jesus had when he died. That's what going into the water means. Okay, We see this in Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. It says this, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him you were raised to new life. Why? Because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Watch this. Here it is. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us. And took it away by nailing it to the cross. So, what does this all mean? It's it's literally right in the beginning. Go back to that verse, verse 12. Right at the beginning of that passage. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. So baptism is a symbol of Christ's burial and his resurrection. That's what baptism is, pretty much. It's it's a symbolism. Number two, 
um, the question was, what is the meaning of baptism? Number one, it, I move from death to life. And number two, I rise to new life. Come on, come on. Come on. The, this is baptism. Baptism is a symbol of your new life as a Christian. Amen. Amen. We bury the old life yeah. and we rise to walk in a new life. Amen. So all of you that struggle with shame, you can leave the shame in the water. Amen. All of you that struggle with guilt and condemnation, you can leave the guilt and the condemnation in the water. Amen. All of you that have labels that have limited you, you can leave the labels in the water. Because now you got to, by faith, rise up and know that you're coming to new life. Yes. You're a new creation. What was done to you, what happened to you, what you did, yeah, yeah. leave it in the water. Yes. It's meant to show the world that you love, trust, and have put your hope in Christ. Yeah. Baptism, like we have said, is like a wedding ring. It's like, it's not, please don't. Okay. Let's say I'm not married. And I put on a wedding ring, which I'm not married right now. So let's say that I'm not married right now, and I put on a wedding ring. Here's a question. Does that make me a married person? No. It's the same way. In the same way, you can be baptized in the church, but it doesn't mean that you are a follower of Christ. Right. The same thing. Now, let's, let's flip it a little bit, okay? What if I was married, and me and my wife actually had a wedding, but I never put my ring on? Does that still make me unmarried? No. Because I actually had the ceremony. We did the thing and we signed the papers and we're married legally. If I don't wear my ring, it doesn't take away my marriage. Okay, so in the same way, you can be a true believer in Christ, but not get baptized and all your sins would still be paid for, including your disobedience to not get baptized. And they would still be paid for and forgiven by God. So you can be a believer and a true follower of Jesus who decides not to get baptized and your sins are still forgiven. Yeah. Everything will still be paid for and you're still saved. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Now, if I'm truly married and I genuinely love my wife, like, wouldn't you expect me to wear my ring? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I would want the world to know yeah. that I'm taken for life. So if I've trusted Jesus to save me from my own sin and my mess ups, and if he's the king of my heart, then I want the world to know it. Amen. Amen. Baptism is a statement to everyone who sees my baptism, yes. that I have trusted Christ for my salvation, yes. and that I'm committed to living for him. Yes. So um, there are many people that have been in the church for a long time, not baptized. Um, you're like a married person that chooses not to wear their wedding ring. And that's kind of sus. That's kind of sus, y'all. I mean, if my wife took her ring off every day before going to work, I think we would have really interesting conversations after work. Or if I decided to do so. That's, that's, that's even more sus because I'm a pastor. Okay, how about with you in Christ? Is like for some of you in here, um, you just don't want to get baptized because you don't want anybody to see you wet. And no one's really thinking about it. Um, those of you who don't want to do it because you're just outwardly rebellious. And, and my question is this, my question to you is this, if you're married to Christ, you can lower me a little bit. If, if you're married to Christ and you, you chose them, why is your wedding ring off? Wow. It's a little bit of a... Romans chapter six, verse four says this, for we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Amen. Someone say new life. New life. Here's a side note that I want to give you, okay? Here's a side note. Baptism does not make you a believer. 
So please don't come here going like, I want to get baptized so I can become a believer. No, your, your faith makes you a believer. Yes. Baptism shows that you already are a believer. Baptism does not save you. Only your faith in Christ can do that. And we see that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9, which is a very, very popular verse. It says this, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. There are so many of you that need to tattoo this verse in your heart. Because you keep doing good things in order to get God's approval. And, and, and God is saying, I already did a good, perfect thing when I crucified my son Jesus on the cross. So you need that constant reminder of Ephesians that tells you it's, it's never going to be about what you do. And it's not going to be about how well you behave or how well you perform. Amen? And this includes baptism. I, I, I really want you know everybody in our church to understand um, that we do come from certain traditions, certain religious backgrounds that put a lot of weight on baptism, and it's good if it's under the context of obedience. Yeah. Right. But it's a terrible thing when it's under the context of salvation. Yeah. So that's baptism. Everybody got it? Yeah. We're almost done. Yeah. <clears throat> now there's a second baptism, and that is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. This is John speaking, okay? Jesus' cousin. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So Jesus promised us that when he returned to heaven, he would give us the Holy Spirit. And there are many powerful things that result when we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we're going to be looking at two very powerful things that happen that are critical for our relationship in our journey with Jesus, uh, without the Holy Spirit, these two things would not be possible. Number one, the Holy Spirit enables us to live a holy life. And that is very powerful to me and it's very important. So I hope that you catch that, okay? The Holy Spirit enables us to live a holy life. On our own, we will never be able to live a holy life. Before our relationship with God, we would sin all the time, whether consciously or unconsciously. But the Holy Spirit within us changes us from the inside out and gives us the power to live differently. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to um, uh, expand a little more. Following Jesus is impossible on our own, but with the Holy Spirit giving us new life, we can do the impossible. So what does this mean? Um, This goes back to the power of grace. Yes. And the power of the gospel. Yeah. Um, Jesus dies on a cross and he proves his resurrection to his followers. More than 500 at a time, the Bible records in, I think, Acts something or 1 Corinthians 15, I believe. I forget. And before he goes back to heaven, after he showed his resurrected body that he rose from the dead after being dead for three days, he says, I'm going to leave you a promise. And this promise is the Holy Spirit. And it is the promise of the Holy Spirit that allows us to function and live the way that religion tries to force us to. So I know that religion has a really negative connotation. Um, And if I could be quite frank with you, um, Christianity is very, really really looked down upon in our, especially in our city that is very, very secular and in our city that is very liberal and progressive. Uh, Now, you know, being a follower of Jesus is looked down upon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the reason why, it's because, unfortunately, somewhere along the lines of our faith, um, some leaders came in and started transitioning from the Holy Spirit to my willpower. Wow. So they, 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 would, they switched the power of God through the Holy Spirit, and they replaced the Holy Spirit with rules and tradition. This is why so many of you had a little bit of a moment where you ran away from church. Or you had a little moment where you ran away and walked away from your faith. Or you had moments where you were doubting your faith if you should continue 
in your faith. And I'm wondering how many people even in our church right here in this building are considering to walk away from faith. And the reason is because we replace the power of the Holy Spirit with our own strength and power. And any time, and I've said this many, many, many times, any time that the natural tries to perform or carry the weight of the supernatural, we get tired quickly. When you're trying to live God's way through your strength, you will wear out. Because you and I we're imperfect and we're not designed to live perfectly. So when you try to fulfill God's will, when you try to fulfill God's word through your own strength and you replace the Holy Spirit with your own willpower, you will exhaust yourself, burn yourself out and come to a place where you're going to walk out. In our nature, we like to earn things, like we've said in the series. And there are some leaders sometimes <clears throat> that have tried to get their church or their members, sometimes out of goodwill or sometimes out of bad will or sometimes out of ignorance, to behave well. And like I said, sometimes that comes from a good place, sometimes it comes from a bad place. Yeah. And what they do is they burden the people with rules and traditions. And then the people follow for a while, but they can only follow for a while. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And maybe this was your story. Mm-hmm. You're like, nah, this is irrelevant. It's 2022 now. Mm-hmm. Like these things don't work. And the truth is that those things don't work. Yeah. Yeah. Because personally, and I hope no one gets offended, I don't think religion is the solution. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. The only solution is Jesus and his promises. Yeah. yeah. And so, here's what Jesus promised. He promised the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you and me the ability, number one, to be changed and transformed. So thank God that when we come to Jesus, we're not in charge of transforming ourselves. Because how many of you have tried the gym thing at the beginning of the year? Amen? It's impossible, right? Like some of you, it's impossible. You try to get fit... Every six weeks, you're trying. And you're always saying, I'll start on Monday. But you never say, what year on Monday? (laughs) So, look, if, if, if you and I truly had the power to heal ourselves, we would. If you and I had the power to really, truly change our lives, you would. So if we come to the place that we know that we can't, then isn't it time for us to consider something else? And I'm not just talking to people who don't believe in Jesus. I'm talking about the people who do believe in Jesus. Because there are true, genuine believers in Jesus who are tired. Who are exhausted. Because they've received grace, but they've mixed a little bit of law. And by law, by law, I'm like for all of you that don't understand the context, by law I mean religion or rules. The, the Bible's split into two, two covenants. Law and grace. Law was all the rules. Grace is where we're at now. So many people are in a new season stuck in the old. And that's why they can't receive the blessings of the new. So here's what Jesus is trying to say to you. There's baptism in water. It's, 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 it's your ring, bro. It's your ring, sis. Right? You're committed to me. You trust me. I saved you. Good. There's another baptism. And that is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Where the Holy Spirit fills your life, where the Holy Spirit comes into you because you 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 welcome it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the Holy Spirit who begins to transform you, but not only transform you, but begins to empower you. Yes. Empower you to live in a holy way. Some of you are trying to be holy, but you keep feeding your flesh. Right. Some of you are trying to live a holy life, but you're trying to live a holy life in your own power. And I'm just here to tell you, if you're trying to be good and live holy in your own power, you're going to fail sooner or later. 
it is impossible for you to do it on your own. And I wonder how many real, true, genuine believers of Jesus need to quit relying on themselves. Mm -hmm. You need to give up on you trying. And what you need to do is allow the Holy Spirit to be the one who empowers you to change. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is very important. It's when the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, his, his Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, raises you to life, transforms you, and empowers you and changes you. Look at John chapter 6, 63. The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Amen. Who gives eternal life? The Spirit. Human effort accomplishes? Nothing. Mm -hmm. And the very words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. life. Here's the second thing. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be a witness for Jesus. Amen. A witness is someone who tells the truth about something he or she experienced. Left to ourselves, we would never be able to share what we believe effectively, but the Holy Spirit gives us power to speak boldly about what God has done in our lives. Yes. Not only can we speak about what we've experienced, but the Holy Spirit also enables us to live out what we speak. Without the Holy Spirit, you, it's, it's very difficult for you to share something authentically. How can you share that you've been transformed by Jesus when His Spirit hasn't done it? That's like trying to sell a really juicy burger you've never tasted. Or invite somebody and tell them how good the movie was without you watching it. It has to be real in your life first. And so when the Holy Spirit... Um, you give him entrance into your life. You give him access to your heart and he changes you. Yeah. You can now effectively witness to others yeah. about what Jesus has done in your life. Yes. Yes. Acts 1 verse 8 says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Yes. Yes. That's good. This happens through the Holy Spirit. Yes. <clears throat> How many of you are good preachers when it comes to anime? Anybody hit up any good boba places? Yeah. Anybody ever been to like a really good Korean fried chicken place? Yeah. Want to give me some names? Han's chicken? Um, okay. So, see, we actually are all natural preachers. We preach about what has impacted us. Like when a dude gets a good haircut, he tells all his friends, this barbershop was lit, bro. <laughs> right? They treat you well. They serve you well. They even have drinks for you and, you know, all this type of stuff. When you go to a hotel that's really nice and clean, you go to it. And when you go to a hotel that's really dirty, you'll also preach about it too. <laughs> I, I went to this hotel in Florida once. Oh, my gosh. There are cockroaches on the bed. Oh. I'm terrible when it comes to bugs. <clears throat> we left right away. Okay, so you, you see that like what is real to you, it's, it's easier to make real when you share it. I'm wondering if many of you don't share what is real to you because it's not real to you yet. And I'm wondering if a lot of you when you go to school, you take off your wedding ring. Or when you go hang out with your friends, you, you, you take off the wedding ring. When you're out at Cactus, your conversations don't match the wedding ring. I, I'm wondering how many of you, when it's, it's time to take your lunch break at work, it's time to take the ring off. Because your mouth is doing a lot of dirty work. You, you understand? Uh, baptism leaves all that in water. And when you come up and you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life and you say, Jesus, I need you and I want your Holy Spirit to come and change me and transform me. Uh, your whole approach to conversation, your whole approach to everything 
it now matches the ring. Because a lot of people get baptized and they don't live in the Holy Spirit. They don't allow God into the life. And so they still live. They didn't leave anything in the water. For some, the only thing they left was the makeup. <laughs> and maybe an eyelash or two. Those things are scary. They look like caterpillars. Sometimes I see them laying around. I'm like, ah, what the heck? So, food for thought. Have you been baptized in water since you turned, you've turned away from your sins? Some of you have not yet been baptized. And you're holding on to your pedo baptism, which is you were baptized as a baby. And you made a decision later on in life. Maybe a few months ago, you made a decision that you're going to follow Jesus. You want to live for him. And your baptism has not sealed the deal yet because your baptism is non-existent. Yeah. So are there any of you that have turned away from sin that today you're saying, you know what? I trust Jesus. I'm going to put my wedding ring on. I want all my friends to see it. I want all my That's why we encourage for people to invite their friends and their family. Because we want to show our friends, our family, our close circle, hey, I'm on Team Jesus now. I'm on Team Jesus. This, this, this is me now declaring publicly. It's a public declaration. And so maybe there are some of you that need to consider today saying, I need to get signed up to a city group and I need to get baptized today. Uh, yeah, make that decision today. We, we won't baptize you today because we're not ready for that. <laughs> but make your decision today and then your city group leader will let you know when we're getting baptized. And another thing, no, there are some of you that were baptized a little older, but you just did it because it was cool or it was an emotional decision and it never really meant anything for you. And so maybe you did not get baptized. You just got wet. <laughs> so there are some of you in here that you did get wet a little older and you were plunged and submerged, but it was just getting wet. It meant nothing to you. You had no clue what you were doing. You just did it because everybody in the youth group was doing it. <laughs> but you had no understanding that what it meant was a ring. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you may need to reconsider. And ask the Lord. Take it personal to the Lord. Be like, Lord, I didn't know what I was doing. I just got wet. I don't know if that counts or not. And if the Lord makes you feel that it counted, then praise God. Yeah. If the Lord made you feel like it didn't count because it wasn't really what it was supposed to be, then uh, maybe reconsider getting baptized. Okay? Number two, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? It's another food for thought. Are you living out your Christian walk based on your power and your own strength? And this is why maybe you keep falling in the same thing over and over and over and over again. Maybe this is why you're starting to feel burned out and tired. Because Jesus said, all of you who are tired and weary, come to me and I will give you rest. I'm not saying that living a Christian life is not hard. No, Jesus even said, in this world you will have trials. You will have trouble. But it's not meant to burn you out and keep you from him. It's meant to keep you with them. Yeah. 